everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. It has been a hot minute since I have recorded one, and I'm very excited to be back here with all of you beautiful souls. Um, today, I would like to talk to you about relationships. I love talking about relationships. I actually was going to talk about something else, and this is like, I was like, okay, whatever I start talking about is what I'm going to do. So here we go. Um... My relationship dynamic has always been like this. It's like an experiment in love and also an experiment in life because I feel like how we relate to our partner is like, it's like the biggest reflection of how we are growing in the timeline in our lives. And I think that's so beautiful. And also it's like so emotional um, because it's like someone's with you all the time you know, in your emotional energetic vortex. And that can be a lot. Um, Yeah, I just want to take a deep breath. I invite everyone to take a deep breath. Um, Take a deep breath with me. (sighs) I've learned a lot about relationships in in the timeline that I have not made a podcast sometimes when I a lot of times when I'm going quiet for a while it's because I'm growing myself and then I come back and I report to all of you like this is what I've learned here we go and in my relationship right now with fair day we are going through a lot and I also what I my big download recently I've had a lot of them but one of them is that the dynamic that we have like as sovereign beings here, yes, we are our own individual. We are an individual, beautiful soul. And also, we are representing the collective. So, like, what happens in our relationships to each other is not just what happens between me and this person that's standing in front of me. It's between me and whoever has come before them. So, for me, I've dated men and women. But I'm going to talk specifically about the men Um, because this is the one that I have a lot of trauma with. I don't have trauma necessarily with women because all of this goes back to your primary relationship with your caregivers. So for me, my mother and I, uh, yes, we have our stuff because I left my cult and she wants me to be in my cult. Uh, But other than that, I know she loves me. I know she loves me to this day and that has been a very secure connection my whole life. With my father, I've had a lot, a lot of trauma. He was very abusive, uh, very misogynistic, which means like he puts down, he views women as less than, and he actively would, you know, make this very vocal with me because I grew up with only sisters and my mom. And honestly, for most of my childhood, I felt very controlled and smothered by him because he would do this physically, emotionally, energetically with me. With me specifically because I was the only one who would kind of speak up. My sister was, would just go along with whatever was happening. Uh, they call it the fawn state. Fawn, like a deer in the headlights that just freezes. That's the fawn state. It's like, I don't know. I guess I'm just going to go along with whatever is happening. Uh, and I wouldn't. So my connection to the masculine has been, it's not safe. They try and control me. I'm not free. And also I have to leave because I cannot be myself authentically around the masculine. Like, I, it's not safe to be myself in this environment, and so I must leave. And I noticed that within my partnerships, I hit this point a lot. Like, w- I, I noticed the loop happening. Not I hit it a lot. I notice that it happens in almost every partnership where I, myself, as a sovereign being... And all of my programming, I am very empowering of women and I'm always like trying to help the collective of women rise up so that we can balance the energy because the masculine energy is very overrun right now in society for for thousands of years. We all we all understand this. We have a lot of masculine energy. Even women are acting masculine, very in their masculine. And I (laughs) was also in my masculine in a lot of relationships because I thought that's what I need to do in order to protect myself. And so I wasn't able to like show my emotions. I wasn't able to connect in the way that I wanted to connect. And 
this year, this last year and a half with Faraday, I really opened up all of that. I really, it was the deepest, it is the deepest that I have ever gone with someone emotionally, energetically, partnership wise. And it's really beautiful. And also it scares the shit out of me and brings up all of my programming that I have, uh, all the belief systems that have been put upon me by my parents, by my religion that I grew up with, by society, everything. Everything is uh, conscious or subconscious programming of belief system. Even the social media, even the movies that I grew up with, which is like you find your prince and then you live happily ever after. And I was like, that's dumb. I'm going to be the sovereign being. I'm not going to just have my whole focus be on finding the guy and he's going to make me happy. And still subconsciously I was doing this. So I had kind of like this split personality in the way that I was in the world and also the way that I was in my relationships. And I actually see this in a lot of women that I'm very close with. Like this is a common thing. And a lot of women that I work with uh, when I do coaching or any sort of readings or sessions. It's like this common theme of like we have been able to rise up in all of these dynamics like maybe at work or in our community and like within our friend group but within our partnership there's still this very deep seated programming belief systems that we have of the way that we are meant to be in a relationship in order to receive that love from the masculine and I noticed within myself no matter how empowered I was, I was still like focusing all of my energy on Faraday and all of like trying to make him okay and serve, like kind of serve him. And I've been working with this really amazing woman here on the island who is a mentor of mine in energy work and also just female empowerment. And uh, something that sh I'll share some of the things I've learned from her. And I've really, some of them, the one I'm about to say right now, it took me a while to really let it in <laughs> because this is, uh, very deep in our psyche. This one has been buried. So um, this is why I'm speaking that this is a like a mass consciousness thing. This is not just like men who are here in the timeline right now are bad people. This is like, this is how we have been programmed over thousands of years. And right now I see a lot of men are actually, <laughs> are actually, um, trying to shift this they're trying to be good men and they don't know what to do and there isn't like a lot of resources on how to shift this and so everyone's kind of like flying blind like they got blindfolds on blind like an eye mask on and they're trying to figure out what's going on right but this thing that i realized with working with this beautiful um elder in our community here on Copanyong is that the energy dynamic between men and women for thousands of years has been you know, everyone talks about, I want my king, I want my queen, I, you know, like this prince, princess thing, like this energy, this archetype of, I want this person that is my equal. I want someone who, you know, makes all my dreams come true, makes everything. Also, that's a lot to put on someone. But in this context, what I'm going to talk about is the energy dynamic between king and uh, between men and women. We want it to be king and queen, right? Like equal, we're both in our power, we're both sovereign beings. Like sovereign being means I have my own connection to source. I know what I want in the world. I'm figuring it out. And I'm fully supported by my partner in that process of figuring it out, right? Because it's an ever evolving process. And so we want it to be king and queen, the energy. We're talking about the energy type, right? But the energy dynamic between most men and women in the world, even to this day, is king-slave. Just going to let that land for a minute. <sighs> because, and you see this in the world today, even in some parts of the world, this still plays out physically, where like the woman is literally like still a servant to her husband or the men in her life. And in our modern Western society today, this doesn't play out as much physically. And we're even consciously saying to ourselves, like, we're, I'm an equal, I'm a woman, I can go into the workforce, I can, I can make money, I can take care of myself, I am a sovereign being, right? And then we get in partnership and we're just like energetically and emotionally trying to do everything we can to make sure our partner is okay. And it's 
I'm speaking in generalizations right now, but I will tell you that once I, once you hear this and then you let it sink in for a couple days, you'll start realizing more and more how true this is. Because even for me, a very empowered woman, I noticed that I gave up a lot of my power in the beginning of the relationship with Freddie. I just, he didn't try and take it away from me. I've had men in the past try and take it away from me. He was like actively trying to not take it away from me. And, um, and I was just like, here, yeah, you make the decisions. Yeah. You, you, I'm just going to give up my, my whole life and we're just going to go wherever you want. And you know, yeah, let's just flow. I'm, I'm flowy now. I'm in my feminine. And, it it showed up in many different ways, but one of the main ways that it showed up was I know that I am non-monogamous by nature. I know that I, I have been in a long-term marriage, monogamous marriage for six years, and I know that I will never do that again. I know deep down in my bones that I want to be non-monogamous. I want to have a primary partner or many primary partners, many love connections in my life, but I want to have people that I have deep, very deep connections with that are like my family, my soul family, my partner, whatever those show up. And also I know that I'm not going to sleep with the same person for the rest of my life with only one person. So in my relationship with Faraday, I was like, yeah, let's be open. Like I've already figured this out. This is me. But the way that we played it out, the way that we played out the openness I was very, very, very much giving up my power. I was very much like, yeah, whatever you want to do. Yeah, yeah. I was fawning. I was the one who was like just going along with whatever he wanted. Even when he asked me, what do you want? But then I also noticed that, and Faraday will own up to this if you ask him, but that the masculine is so used to getting what they want. This is the very deep programming of male privilege, especially white male privilege, that they can get very excited about what they want. And that energy very much dominates the conversation, the relationship, the way decisions are made. So I feel like there is a balance of both that needs to happen. Like women need to step up into, this is actually what I want. No, this is not okay with me. And this doesn't make me feel good in my body. This doesn't make me feel safe. This would make me feel safe. Let's do it this way. And then there needs to be a lot more space because I noticed with Faraday, he would ask me, what do you want? And then he would be like, pushy about it. Like, can you just give me an answer? I need an answer. I need an answer. I need an answer. Or like p- put me in situations where I was like on the spot. Like I needed to give an answer because the play party was literally happening and he wanted to change our agreement on whether we were playing with other people or not. And I was like, oh yeah, we can play with other people. Even though my body wanted to only play with him that night. And then I sat there and watched him have like, eight women suck his dick in a row, you know? And it's just like torture inside of me and so much pain in my body because I didn't speak up for what I needed. I was like in service to what he wanted and not in service to myself first and honoring my body first. And also I felt like he didn't give me the space to really feel into my body. And and sometimes for me, it takes days, especially for major relationship. If you know anything about major decisions if you know anything about human design I have emotional authority which means like I can it can be a fuck yes right now but I need to sleep on it at least one night or two nights so that when my emotional wave goes up and down it's still a fuck yes all the way through because I notice that if I make a decision today and I'm in my great place and my great mood and tomorrow I'm down on my wave and my emotional my emotional authority will say like it's a no and then someone's like why are you changing your mind are you crazy And I just didn't have the space and I didn't know how to speak up for that space. I honor that I didn't speak up for that space enough. And also what happens, all of these things are blah, 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 right? What happens is a lot of disconnection in relationships and a lot of me over the uh, the course of our relationship, shutting down, wanting to pull away from him, feeling very unsafe in the dynamic. And this is like stacking up, you know, and and I kind of hit like a, this breaking point a couple of weeks ago where I was like, something needs to shift. And it was within me. It was within our dynamic and it was within him. And I honor all of those processes. And I was also okay if like, I just knew what I needed and I wasn't wanting him to do anything he didn't want to do. I just needed to finally speak up for what I needed. And there was a couple situations that happened that really 
put me over my my breaking point of like yeah like either you you really step into your power right now there's this there's this moment of like okay this is enough I really need to speak up right now or you settle more into your servant mode of whatever the masculine wants and um (laughs) I'm going to share about some of these little known fact until now is I actually made a podcast about all of this last week and I was still in my emo- I was still deep in my pain body about a lot of these things and I'm not going to release that podcast because the thing that I I really want all of us to know and I even say this to myself and I'm so happy I gave myself this space is that everything is beautiful and everything can be learned from as long as we stay in the mode of I'm in my power I get to choose what my timeline is I am not a victim I am a sovereign being who gets to decide what happens next I am in control of my timeline I am the main character and because I was doing these little things to give up my power over the last year and a half with Ferdy um they all kind of stacked up and like fell like the whole thing just kind of fell over. And I was like, I felt, I felt not in my power. I felt very upset. I felt very sad. I felt very angry. I felt very frustrated and I didn't know how to process it because I'm like, I'm a fucking sovereign being. I'm so powerful. And what I realized is that I was ashamed that I had put myself in these positions that wasn't honoring my myself my little inner girl I wasn't protecting her because that's my job Faraday's in charge of protecting himself and also creating a safe space for us as much as he can and I want to say here that he actually the whole time through all of this was doing the best he could with the programming the belief systems that he had and also the fact that this was his first ever open relationship (laughs) like real open relationship the love has always been there between us and it will always stay and I love that. And I am so grateful for that. And also because we love each other so much, there has been so many emotions and so many dramatic things and um, a lot of me emoting <laughs> recently. And uh, I love that he is holding space for that and um, holding, the, holding the, the groundedness. Because for a lot of our relationship, I was holding the groundedness and he was kind of being the, the kid you know, like the playing everything and he was doing his best and showing up physically in a lot of ways, but emotionally, energetically, I feel like he was doing his best to catch up and he wasn't in the same, I don't want to classify as as levels or anything, but like we were in different places. We might've been like not on the same page. Let's just say that maybe not even the same book, but we were doing our best to get, to get closer and closer. And I feel like right now, I can say all of this because I feel like we actually are on the same page and we're moving in the direction that feels really empowering for both of us. But the thing that was really hard for me was I kept saying yes to him connecting with women, but there was something off about the way he was using his energy, his sexual energy. And also there's two things. One, I'll talk about the sexual energy first. I've had periods of my life where, I mean, I was a virgin when I got married and I've been in monogamous relationships. I've been open. I've been living here on Copenhagen single and just like, you know, trying all the things, doing all the things, vibing. And I've also been celibate, which means like I do not have sex. I've had moments in my timeline where I've on purpose chosen consciously to be celibate for a set amount of time. And when you do this, you take you take the sexual energy off the table and you add, you really look at all your relationships in your life and you're like, am I doing this because it leads to sex? Or And a lot of men and women actually when they want sex, yes, of course there's a physical connection, but there's something deeper of like, I want to be validated. I want to feel worthy of love. I want to be loved, you know? So like, can we get all of those needs met without having sexual connection and do the people in our life so for instance for me the question I was asking myself as the feminine is 
I was being when, in this these modes when I was celibate. I was being very. I was, didn't have a partner, and I was single on the island. And I had people on the island that I had already had a lovership with and a sexual connection. And I just let the people who were coming through my life that were interested in being with me sexually that I was celibate for this set of time. And then I wanted to see what happened next. I wanted to see if they still wanted to be in my life, if they still wanted to have a connection with me, or were they just wanting to follow this sexual energy and where it went. And usually when there's sexual energy connection and it's a sparkiness, yes, it has a transmission in there. There's a reason why you have this connection to each other. But I feel the more that I've slept with people and been in the world, the less I want to have this, um, I've only had one, one night stand, but like the less I want to have like this short connection with sexual, like short intimate connection that involves sex. I, I am in, I'm in here for the, the people I can build my tribe with and, and the, the sexual connections where I can go into spirit with them and they love me, mind, body, and soul, you know, like these like really deep ones that turn me on on all levels. Uh, but it really, I had to be celibate in order to understand the difference between all of these energies because before I was just, my sexual energy was going everywhere. I, I had people who were, I, I had a lot of women around me saying that I was trying to take their boyfriend away from them energetically. And I didn't understand what that meant because I was just shining. I was just vibing. And there is this, there is the shiny vibey version of me. But now I have this where I get to choose whether that shiny vibey version of me is with or without sexual energy involved because you can be vibey and shiny and be sexual energy within your body and then you can also be vibey and shiny and exchanging sexual energy with someone before you even touch them before you can be writing them sexting this is all, it's all energy so we have our physical energy like you know, us doing things in the physical we have our emotional energy of how the energy flows through our bodies and how that shows up in our bodies and we also have our sexual energy which is it's here for creation, it's here for pleasure and enjoyment, and it's very sacred. And with Faraday, I felt like he was not aware of his sexual energy and where he was putting that and in what context, and, and also if that sexual energy had control over him. So basically, like, was his dick in his head? And there was many times where I felt that his dick was in his head. For instance, we decided to... Uh, play with other people at uh, one of the play parties. We've been doing a lot of play parties recently. Uh, it's high season here on Copenhagen and it's beautiful. We're growing the community. We have like 50 people every single time with like 20 people on the waiting list. I probably could be doing one every weekend, but I, I cannot hold that much energy. It is a lot of energy to process. Um, I feel like we're changing people's lives. People say this every time that we're changing their lives. Oh my God, this is like the most safe space, the most beautiful, sensual, sexual, sacred, all the things. They feel safe, sexy, and empowered, right? That's my goal every time that they leave feeling safe, sexy, and empowered. And I, because of that story I was sharing earlier about how I had said yes when I act, my body actually meant no about him playing with other people, this still was in me. I really needed to heal this. And I hadn't really spoken up we had never had a play party where we just hosted and I didn't and and we didn't play with other people we just play with each other I've never had that I'd never up until that moment when I'm about to tell you this new story had that and so we started doing them here on the island and Faraday said are you cool with us playing at the play party and something also you have to understand is I've hosted a lot of play parties in my life like I don't know. I think we're going like 20, 30 at this point. That might not sound a lot in numbers, but for me, this is a lot of people. We're talking, I don't know, at least 100, 200, 1,000 or 2,000. Like, wow, I can't do numbers right now. I used to be really good at math in school, just putting that out there. Uh, apparently, I've lost my basic math. But basically, I think this is about 1,000 or 2,000 people. A thousand, oh my God. Okay, I give up on that. You can do your own math. 50 people every time I've hosted about probably 25 or 30. I have seen a lot of things. I've experienced a lot of things. Again, what I'm saying where my body is at, where my energy is at, is it is welcoming deep, immersive, ongoing 
connections with people who are in my tribe, with people who are also actively building the new earth, with the divine masculine and feminine who are mature. I am not so much into the young figuring out their stuff. I have figured out my stuff. I want to just vibe. I don't, and if I'm with someone who hasn't figured out their stuff, I'm energetically helping them figure out their stuff. So no matter what I do, I'm going to be helping them. And I don't, I'm, that's not, that's not relaxing for me. That doesn't bring pleasure into my body. So I said yes, and it was a yes to us playing with people, but it was more because I wanted to see, I was trying to figure out what it was that was making me so triggered about him being with other women. Because I've dated people in the past where we were both open and it was fine. We had great connections with people at the play party, outside, with other, we had lots of things, lots of constellations of different arrangements. And I wasn't triggered in the way that I was triggering, I was getting triggered by Faraday. And he kept saying, oh, it's because you love me so much. You're worried I'm going to leave. And, you know, you're worried I'm going to run off with like a, a young woman. And I said, no, no, honey. No, it is not that. I'm worried that I'm going to get so annoyed by you that I'm going to leave or I'm going to ask you to leave my house. So I don't know if he ever really believed me up until I set this up until I broke. I feel like he kind of just kept saying, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think he was trying to understand it in the best way. I'm going to give him the, the credit that he was doing the best he could with what he had. Anyways, we go to our first play party here on the island since we got back. And uh, we pl I asked him, I want to play with each other first. And then I want us to check in and really, you know, ask each other again, do we really want to play with each other? Like in the moment at the play party, just check the vibe of how we're both feeling. And I also want it to be where at any moment, if we're not feeling good with any of us, either of us connecting, we can, all, we can both veto this and just stop. And so he was like, yeah, yeah cool. So we played with each other at the beginning of the play party. It was really vibey and sexy and all the things. And then he asked me, are you cool if I play with other people? And I said, yeah, go have fun. And then um, he ended up connecting with a woman who is in our community. And uh, she has been following both of us for many years online or following Faraday at least for many years online. And then when I came online in her vortex, you know, she's in the German community, all these things. So... Um, he, <laughs> this will go into my second point later, but I'll just explain the situation. But like, basically she gave him a blow job in front of everyone while he was standing in the kitchen and there's like 40 people and I'm sitting in the living room with some of my friends, some of my girlfriends and just, it's just happening in front of everyone. And it felt like this very like display thing, like showy display and my friend who is a close friend of mine was like, are you okay with it? Like, how are you doing? And I was like, I am really fucking triggered right now. And, um, and she was like, okay, I want to, can I hold your hand? So she like held my hand through it. And we just talked about it. And I was just like, I was, I wasn't upset at Freddie. I was just trying to figure out why am I so triggered right now? And I look at a lot of this in a very intellectual way. You know, like I, I honor my emotions in my body, but I also believe that a lot of these things come from, you know, our body's trying to sig send us a signal that something is off within our belief system. So either we need to change our belief system to honor what we need, or we need to change something in our environment so that it honors our belief system, right? And something was off and I was really trying to figure this out. So anyways, after the, him and this woman connected, he came up, Faraday came up to me and asked me, are you okay? And I, and I said, oh, that's really nice. Thank you for checking on me. I'm okay now. That was very triggering, but I'm okay now. And then I ended up connecting with someone at the play party, made out with someone. It was really nice. Um, it was great vibes, you know? And then, but like, I had no intention of seeing this person that I connected with again. Um, and then the next day we are talking about, like Faraday and I like to get together and celebrate and like, you know, celebrate all the things that have happened and all the beautiful connections we saw and like, just like, wow, we're doing amazing things in the world. And it's just so nice to like have a co-creator that we're, we can celebrate with this. Cause a lot of times in the past I would be creating things and I would be alone in my celebration. So I love, and I think he's the same way where he's created a lot of things. And then like the day after really want to talk to someone about it, who is also a creator. So this is kind of a ritual that we have. We go get a cacao, we talk about things. And I was really tired, like in my body from holding a lot of the space. And he 
was like, you know, we were talking about what we were celebrating. And then he was like, is there anyone that you want to see after the play party? And I was like, no. And babe, you know, there isn't like I, he knows that I wasn't into this guy in a long-term relationship way or like an ongoing connection way. And also that's interesting because I just said all these things about how I'm not into this stuff. And I was, this was kind of my final test of that, of like having this connection at the play party where I knew I didn't want to connect with them beyond and I was, it was beautiful in the moment. And also it's not, I, I'm in building mode. I'm in building my community, my connections, and I need the energy to go back and forth and like resource me in all the beautiful things that I'm creating. So for me, that was a, it was a learning lesson for me. of like, yeah, this is actually, this is the kind of connections that I want. So I said, do you want to, like, I knew where he was going with this, with Faraday. So I was like, is there anyone you want to see? And then he just could not stop talking about this woman and how amazing she was and how she moved her energy and how he wants to see her again and probably sleep with her. If I'm okay with it. But it was the way he was talking about it was like, I was his bro and he was wanting to celebrate this like hot girl that he had connected with. And, but I, I'm not, he wasn't, um, putting her or like degrading her. So I don't want to say that. I just meant like, you know, like when I'm, when I'm talking to my girlfriends and there's like a really, a guy that I find really attractive, I'm going to celebrate that, you know, like, but I celebrate with my girlfriends. I don't go tell Faraday this. And I've never done this to him. I've never made him feel like this, how he, he made me feel, which was like, I'm just receiving all of this sexual energy that he built up with this woman. And I said to I said to him, like, did you tell her that you want to see her again? Because our agreements in the past has always been we check in. Even if we like someone, we check in with each other first. We tell the person, I need to check with my partner before we can continue. And he was like, oh, no, I didn't make her feel like I was going to see her again. No, no, no. But I do feel like she's part of our soul family. And, da, da, da. and I was like, please do not say that someone that you just connected with sexually is also part of, you feel like they're going to be part of our inner, like, inner crew of soul family. Because for me, those those don't go together. Like people who are my soul family are people I have gone deep with for years, and there is built in trust. And they're like when 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 your partner is connecting with someone else sexually, there's a testing ground of like, is this person that I have something I want to continue with? Is this like, or is this just something that I it was nice now and then it evolves into something else? But I don't. I wouldn't ever say to Faraday, this guy I just I just connected with just met. I think he's going to be part of our soul family. I think, yeah, I think you're going to hang out with him and be his best friend. Yeah, yeah, I think it's all great. And also I want to fuck him. Like I was just like, I just shut down. I just got really, really triggered. And I was like, please stop, please stop. And I don't want to even see you anymore right now. I need space. I need space to process this. So I went to the beach, got a massage. And anyways, the next day I realized that I, there was something with sisterhood coming up where, because she, I had connected with this woman before the play party and she had told me like, like I saw her at the coffee shop and she said like, I, I feel so connected to you and like I follow you online. I think it's amazing all your podcasts and everything. And then also she'd come to another event and then right before her and Faraday had connected, she had told me, I really want a partner like how you and Faraday are. And so for me, I'm like, we have this connection, you know, and then she didn't respond to like She didn't reach out to me. She didn't say goodbye at the play party. I think I was playing with someone else while she like that with the other guy while she, so whatever, but she didn't like, there was no connection point after her and Faraday connected. And that was a red flag for me. And also she was messaging him a lot. Like I want to meet up with you. Da, 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 that was amazing. Da, da. And so I said to him, I feel like it would make me feel better if she reached out to me and like, you know, this was some random girl that I didn't know, but she was in my home. Like I hosted her in my home and watched her suck my boyfriend's dick. Like at least she can be, and I know her. So at least she can like reach out and be like, Hey, what's up? Like, are you, are you cool? Are you cool? Are you good? Are you cool with us connecting more? And there was none of that. So this was a learning lesson for me also about sisterhood. Like, wow, I could, I'm going to spend a whole podcast about sisterhood and how much I feel like this is actually the key to open relating because if the women are cool with each other and the women know that they have each other's back and no one's going to take anyone's partner, that is so calming for the nervous system. That is so nourishing 
Like I feel more comfortable and more excited for Faraday to connect to some of my best girlfriends than for him to connect with someone new because my girlfriends know they have my back. They are not going to try and take him and make him a primary partner. Like they know, they know the, they know the, the girl code. Whereas a lot of women in the world today are, are this wounded feminine and they are in the scarcity mindset that there's not that many good men. So if you have a, a man and you're saying he's good, then he must be good and I want him. This is the energy that plays out in a lot of undeveloped feminine, I will say, not mature feminine. And I'm not saying this is what this woman was doing. I'm just saying that was the threat that I felt. And I feel like a lot of women who are listening to this probably also can resonate with that. Um, and it's hard to put into words because we want everyone to feel empowered. We want women to feel empowered. But then why are we like that bitch? Like, you know, like there's this, there's this like disconnect. And I realized I, this is what it is. Like if women went to, if, if a woman came to me first and said, Hey, I'm into Faraday, but I respect you and I honor you first, then I would trust her way more than if she connected with him in my house right in front of me and then never talked to me again. Anyways, so he he asked her to reach out to me. Also, side story, but was very disconcerting for me was I said this 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 request to him like, oh, if you guys want to connect, I would actually love. I'm just realizing in my body that I would love for her to reach out to me. I'm naked in bed with Ferdy when I say this. It's like it's like in the morning on like a Monday morning, and I was actually about to make love with him, and he just it was like, oh, okay, I'll text her right now and grabs his phone to text her. And I was like, you were in bed with me. Are you so excited to connect with this woman that you're like, he's like, oh no, no, I just wanted to, I just wanted to do what you said. I want to, and I'm like, again, your sex, in my head, I was thinking your sexual energy is in charge right now. You want to fuck her. This is what's happening. Um, that's my version of the story. He can have a different version, but that's how I felt in my body. Anyway, so she messaged me pretty immediately after that because he messaged her and was like, hey, are you good? I want to meet with him and da, da, da. And I, I said, thank you for checking in. I, I'm just feeling a little triggered because I, I wish I, I'm realizing now and I didn't say this, so I'm not putting this on her. Like I was just like, I'm just realizing that I would have loved for you to reach out. And she was like, oh, I must be very confused. I, I, I must have been confused because Faraday told me in the play party that he wanted to sleep with me. And that, you know, we would finish this later. And like, literally, like he want, I want to fuck you. This is what he said to her. And I got so angry at him. I was like, I, and this is all over text message, right? And I'm at the beach and Faraday's home. So yeah, I'm at the beach. Faraday's here. And this is all happening over text message between the three of us. And so I'm messaging him, like sending him a screenshot of what she just said. Like, you told me you were, you didn't make her feel like she you were going to see like you didn't imply in any way that you guys were going to see each other again and she's literally telling me that you told her you wanted to fuck her and then he was like oh that's just dirty talk but no i i didn't mean that and i'm like am i dealing with a boy or am i dealing with a man in these moments i feel like i was dealing with a boy a boy who was trying to cover up his mistake instead of just owning it Instead of just being like, yeah, I said that, that was fucked up. I should, that was, that's was not honoring our agreement. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have said that. And I'm sorry. There was none of that. It was just like, oh no, that was dirty. And I was just like, I, I, I yeah, I was, I was in, going into my breaking point. I'm just like, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot do this anymore. I cannot do this in this way anymore. The story keeps going. So <laughs> uh, I said to her, hey, I didn't know this and you know, da, da, da. And then I said, look, let's, so she's like very worried that I'm upset at her. She's like freaking out, sending me voice messages. And I was just like, let's meet, you know what? Let's meet. Let's talk about this like sister to sister, because I'm realizing that some of this is my partner's fucked upness. I'm sorry. The cleaners came. So Afro acts like she's dying every time the cleaners come. Um, anyways, uh, so I meet with this woman and I just want to say again, there's, she's amazing. She's great. This was, this was a story between Faraday and I that she just happened to get pulled into. And of course I have my opinions on like how I wish that she had showed up in different ways. But again, like when you're in an open relationship, you need to let people know what you need. <laughs> Cause like as the couple, like the person who's coming into that, they need to be informed with a like over communication 
of what the couple needs in order for both parties to feel safe. And of course, the person who's coming in also needs to speak up their needs. So basically, there needs to be like a lot of communication, over communication. And this is what I, I know with a lot of my friends who are in open relationships for like 15 years is like, Sometimes they close their relationship because they get tired of all of the communication that needs to happen in order for everyone to feel safe in their bodies. Uh, so anyways, I meet with her and I just say all these things to her straight up. I'm just like, yeah, I, I want to make sure that like, you know, you told me immediately before you you connected with Fairy of the Play Party that you are looking for a partner. And I just need to check in sister to sister like, are you looking for a partner like Faraday or are you looking for Faraday? And she was like, no, 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 I'm not trying to take Faraday away from you. I just want to have fun, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I just said, I was very triggered, but a lot of this was because of Faraday. And I'm sorry that you got affected by that. And she was also sorry for some of the things. So we talked and we, it was great. It was very healing for me. And I think it was very healing for her. Maybe a little traumatic. I'm sorry. Um, and also... I said, look, I, from here on out, like I give you guys the green, green light, like whatever happens here is cool with me. And she was like, well, how would you like it if I like, how would you like it if I meet, reached out to you? Like, af, like you know, if Faraday and I end up making love, like, how would you like me to show up? And I was like, I think over communication is great. Like, if you want to check in, maybe we can even go get a cow and talk about it. Like, to me, this is the juicy stuff of life, you know, is like, how are we feeling in our bodies? How is this all affecting us? Like, all this stuff. And she was like, oh my God, I would love that. That sounds amazing. This feels like very new earth stuff. And I'm like, we, I just told her, I was like, a lot of people put Faraday and I on a pedestal that we have it figured out, but we're just figuring it out ourselves. And we're just like crazy enough to share about it along the way, you know? So, I invite other people who are going through similar things to share about it because the more of us that talk about it, we learn from each other's stories. And so I just want to reiterate that it's not that Faraday and I have any of this figured out. It's that we are just sharing our story with you so that you can decide what resonates with you and what you want to take and leave and apply in your life. Um, so anyways, I tell him and her and Faraday that, yeah, like I'm cool. Do whatever you want to do. Just please communicate with me. And then he meets with her a couple days later and he comes home and he's like, I don't want to see her anymore. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you just put me through all of this? And he was like, yeah, I realized it was the energy at the play party and she's amazing as a person. I just don't feel this sexual connection with her. And, um, and I was like, babe. You told me that you wanted to sleep with her. You could not stop talking about her. And also you told me you feel like she's part of our inner soul family. And now you're saying she's great, but you don't want to spend time with her anymore, like on a one-on-one -on -one way. And I just was like, you just put me through like three days of emotional turmoil and processing. I just, it was like, it was just a lot. And I also was hosting an event every weekend at, the, at this moment in time and doing a lot of things in the community. And I, it was taking too much of my energy to process all of this and also host and be in this leadership hosting role. So I said to him, these are my clear boundaries. Please do not, like I do not want to play with anyone else at the play parties. This is my boundary. This is not going to change. And like for right now, this is what I need. For the next play party, this is what I need. And also, please do not flirt with people right in front of me. I do not want to bring people into our home and watch you in your sexual energy, not in, even in his words. I don't want him to, it makes me feel unsafe for him to flirt with people. It makes me feel disrespected, honestly, and also unsafe because I'm like, he's not even aware of his energy right now and he's spilling this onto people. Um, and... And so I, and I was like, please, and please don't say that people are part of our soul family that Im immediately after connecting with them and you also want to fuck them. Like these, all of these things, no, please do not do this anymore. And so we hosted a Tantra immersion the next weekend. And so this is like th two days after this conversation. And he meets a woman who is very young, you know, in the community, they're vibing, they're having a nice conversation and I was also in this conversation 
And then I got up and left because I felt uncomfortable for some reason. And I couldn't figure out what it was. And I realized now it was that I could feel his sexual energy starting to go out. You know, he was like, he wasn't flirting with her on the surface, but he was flirting with her energetically. And this is the thing about open relationships is it's not black and white. It is not, we follow these agreements. It is that, yes, but it is the emotional nuances. It is being emotionally mature enough to understand where my energy is going and how my energy is affecting other people and also to shift that in every single moment when I can feel that my part to be in tune with my partner and I can feel that they are not okay with how I'm operating and to go check in with them with Faraday he goes these are the five agreements that we have black and white I have followed them so the rest is kind of on you like I will do what I can but you're making me feel crazy for trying to follow all these nuances and I was like, but this is the juicy stuff, like understanding all of this and, and being able to be so in tune with your partner that you're flowing in this way and making sure that each other feels safe. Like I got up and walked away because I felt uncomfortable and he didn't even notice. And that's okay. I chose to be in that relationship at that moment. So that's okay. But we're cleaning up after the tantra immersion. And again, I'm very tired because I just spent most of the week processing what just happened at the last play party. And... And he was like, oh, so this girl, and he starts doing it again where he's like, so they didn't connect at all sexually or, you know, in any physical or flirty way, but they connected energetically. And he was still doing this with his energy of like, she's amazing. Oh my God. And I feel like she's so mature for her age. And I feel like she's part of our soul family. And is she coming to the play party next weekend? And I was like, I cannot, I cannot. I got so angry. And I, I couldn't even sleep. I was just angry. And I started painting. I was like painting until three in the morning. And and I, I was so angry. I wanted to wake him up and ask him to leave the house because I couldn't, I couldn't rest. My nervous system was so triggered by his presence that I couldn't, I couldn't like sleep in the same space as him. I didn't wake him up. I went to bed, but I really didn't get good sleep. And... I brought all of this up and we have amazing people in our life that are like elders that are like couples counselors for Faraday and I. And so we got on a call with one of them the next day and he really, he really was like, I want to honor that. Yes, Brittany, you need to get better at speaking up for what you need. And also Faraday, this has been a loop that we have been on. Like, I feel like I've been in like five calls with you guys where this same type of situation is coming up and it's the energy it's not what you guys agreed on it's the fact that you're not allowing yourself to slow down enough to understand the nuances of what needs to happen in order for Brittany to feel safe and so Brittany you need to decide if you want to keep going in that and knowing that he's doing the best he can but it might keep triggering for you you need to figure out what you need to do because this is a loop that you guys are playing out. And I said, I'm done. I'm done with the loop. I cannot. I'm done. I'm done. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot anymore. And I really felt very done with whatever the fuck was happening. And something else that I really want to say right now is that it wasn't just the agreements. There is a whole other, or his, it wasn't just Faraday's sexual energy leaking everywhere. There's a whole other level, um, in the dynamic between Faraday and I and relating to other people that other people might not realize, but I feel like it's really important to say right now, which is power dynamics. So we're talking this king queen versus king slave, right? But if you are famous and you are a leader in your community, there is a huge power dynamic that you have to honor. And If you are in the position of power, you are actually the responsible one for making sure that not just you, but everyone around you is protected in this power dynamic. Because a lot of times, especially if we're in situations with younger people who are not aware of a lot of these things, um, they they might not be aware that they need to speak, speak up or that the energy between you and the power dynamic is not equal. So we're talking about this you know, king, queen, king, slave thing. But with Faraday, because he's famous, because he's very well known in his community, because there's like 300 people here on the island just because of him. And like basically has followers here, the community, they come to our events. And a lot of these are young women. 
And this was the thing that was actually triggering the fuck out of me was the fact that every time I tried to bring this up, the power dynamic thing, and this is a common thing that also all facilitators in sexual spaces especially have to be aware of, that they have to make sure that the energy is balanced between them and the person they're connecting with. Because I'm in my feminine, a feminine body, I have been aware of this and I honor this intuitively um, because I understand the other dynamic of how it goes normally. But it's also why I've started recently to step back from wanting to play within the play parties because I was just like, uh, it feels, there feels like something's off. Like it's, I'm only interested in equal partnership power dynamics. And Faraday, every time I tried to bring this up, he kept uh, saying that it didn't, like it didn't count or there wasn't a power. He kept trying to act like it didn't exist, which felt very unsafe for me because it felt like he was opting out of the situation, but he was still in the situation. <sighs> It's Chinese New Year this weekend, so we also have fireworks going off. Okay, we're back. Um, so the, this I have spent most of my life very disempowered by the masculine in, in a, like sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, and also systematic abuse. So this is religion, society, you know, jobs, where as a woman, I have been suppressed and disempowered. I am very consciously aware of this and I'm literally fighting the, for the collective of women to empower every woman that I, every woman that gets in contact with me, I want them to feel empowered. This is my mission. I want to empower every single woman in the whole world. So having a partner standing side by side to me who is not aware, is, is choosing to not be consciously aware of the privilege that men have and the power dynamic that comes with that and also the fact that he's famous and a leader in the community and having them him co-host a sexual space with me oh my god I was like I cannot I can't even have you in my space once I became consciously aware of this I was like I can't even have you in my play party space and of course we're co-creating the play parties now so I was already like had I put women in, in a bad place? Did I like make women feel disempowered just by like, because this happens a lot where like men will choose to not be consciously aware of this. They'll connect with a very powerful woman and they'll use that position of like social proof of that I'm a safe guy now because I'm with this woman who's an amazing woman and then and then leak their sexual energy in the community. This happens a lot here on Copenhagen. I know of close friends where this has happened to them and with their partners. And it's it's traumatizing, especially if you're a woman who is here on the mission to empower all the women. And I just I didn't know how to I didn't know how to I didn't know how to, to reconcile this. I didn't know what to do. Like once I became aware of all of these things, I didn't know what to do. And still in this conversation with Faraday, he wasn't up until this point really honoring this power dynamic. And, and so something had to change. <laughs> like um, I'm going to make a whole other podcast about what's happening now. But this is like the update of a lot of the... I've been sitting with this. I've been going into the forest, screaming, shouting, speaking my truth. I've been processing this. Um, and yeah, there's so much more to say, but I will leave the, you with this. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have. If anything that comes up, I can clarify it in the next podcast. This is just a lot. There's so much I want to say. There's so many more learnings that I have. Uh, the thing I want to end with is that Faraday and I are good. Like we, I still love him. We are good where we're at. Things have shifted in our relationship in many ways since all these things I just talked about. Um, yeah. But there's a lot more I have to say. <laughs> Uh, I hope you have an amazing day and I'm sending you guys all lots of love and always reach out. You can follow me on Instagram at Brittany Bond and yeah, reporting live from my beautiful, lovely home on Copenhagen. Bye you guys. So I want to just jump back on here and do a little add on to this episode. Um, I recorded this episode uh, through recording this episode. I learned a lot. Like sometimes my podcasts, just like Faraday says, are 
my journal in the sense that making the podcast helps me to work through it and figure out what I actually believe. So everything I said in this podcast, I, I do believe is valid. Um, I do believe that, you know, Faraday wasn't aware of his sexual energy and the way it was going out and that I was also worried about power dynamics um, between him and other women and just making sure that everyone felt really empowered in the situation, right? Um, through making this, I also need to own up to my own stuff even more, which is, you know, everyone from 24 years old and younger, everyone I've ever known, my whole family from 24 years old and younger is not in my life anymore. Um, when I left my religion, uh, everyone decided to no longer associate with me. It's what they call it uh, in the Jehovah's Witness religion. So some of my core wounding is abandonment. It is the feeling of the person that I love for whatever reason is going to leave my life or that it's n going to be no longer healthy for me to be in their life. This is something where my mom left my dad and we had to just move out like very suddenly in a very kind of traumatic way. Um, so I have this like either I need to leave or, you know, my partner leaves me. And and not only that is like I've had so many relationships in the ba in the past where I wanted to stay friends. I wanted to stay in each other's lives and they, their new partner did not want me in their life. Um, for whatever reason. Um, and this was really painful for me. Um, so I, I realized through making this and like really sitting with this and owning my stuff in the situation even more is I do have some trauma to work through about not, not even just fair day, and his stuff and his interactions with women, it's like, even if, if he was doing everything completely perfect, in my opinion, I would still have these feelings of, you know, is he going to leave me? Or just, I would find some way to be completely triggered by the situation. And I'm really owning this. And I think that this is also in association with everything I just said about about like women giving up our power in the relationship is um, that, you know, when we drop into more of our feminine, we want the man to take care of us in certain ways. We have to make sure that we stay in our power enough that them being themselves and being their own independent sovereign individual in the timeline doesn't trigger us because it's triggering our like feelings of, security in our lives so with Faraday I have him in the box I don't like saying boxes but he's in the category of someone who will always be my family so no matter what constellation we're in whether we are dating each other married have kids broken up whatever we are always going to be very very special we're going to be the special ones for each other we have made this promise um, to each other and this is something that is really important for me. And I recognize that when I saw him with other women, yeah, he had his own stuff going on, but I also had this overlay of, oh, this is a potential threat to this family that I have in my life. And I, I value this so much to have this person that I consider part of my, you know, one of, one of the very few that I, that knows everything about me we've gone through stuff together that no one else will probably even understand and we still love each other so much as like souls in the timeline and I really do believe um he's gonna laugh when he hears this but I do believe that we are twin flames for each other because uh in my definition of twin flames it's that at a core frequency vibrational level you are the same like you come from the same oversoul family and you are emitting the same frequency and I really believe this about Faraday Night because when I first met him, I was like, oh my God, I met someone who is like the male version of me. <laughs> um, so I just really want to own up to that. And I also like, I took down this podcast. I've been having a lot of feelings about like, should I post it? Because I love Faraday so much and he is such an amazing man. And he really is like, since making that podcast, that this podcast that you're listening to now, he has 
really up leveled and shifted and done whatever he needs to do to make himself a better version of himself for himself. He's not doing that for me. Like he's really let go of whether the fact that we're going to stick together or not romantically. And that's something to be praised, you know, like there are so many men who are not doing the work, who are not caring about doing the work. They're just like, yeah, fuck it. I'm just going to go on to the next woman who will just take me for whatever I'm doing right now. And um, Faraday's really showing up and he's, he's amazing. And we need more men like him in the timeline. And so, and I know that as the feminine, one of the best things that I can do is appreciate and honor him for everything that he does for me in my life, all the ways that he shows up for me and who he is and who he is becoming, that he's like good enough right now in this moment. And I, I want to like declare this on this podcast and to the world that Ferdinand Beck, you are perfect in this moment. I accept you and I love you so much. And, and I'm so excited for all the different evolutions of both of us in the timeline together, um, as best friends and teammates. And, and I also felt really like I needed to share this podcast in order to speak my truth. And I feel that there's so much in here that so many people can learn from and grow in and up level, you know, yourselves in, um, but I want to make sure that all of my words are actually building up and not tearing down. And this is something that I see with a lot of women in the timeline is we get tired of dealing with men who are not working on themselves, who are not, you know, doing their best to become the best version of themselves. Just like all of us, a lot of us women are really doing the work. And so we get tired and then we use our words to tear down. And I don't want to do that. I choose to use my words to build up. Um, and so, yeah, I, this is why I want to do this little add-on. And I'm so excited for everything to come. Everything's already getting so much better and juicier. And, yeah, I'm just excited. And I'll take you guys along on the story with us. Verde's doing a lot more of his vlogs. I'm going to make a lot more podcasts. And I feel, like, back at it and in it. And I'm just vibing. So excited for life. We went to the waterfall today for, like, four hours. And... Wow. Nature, we are nature. Nature is amazing. And I just feel so grateful for this magical island and for being able to be my little mermaid self with my best friend, Faraday, and my little baby Afro bear, my dog. I'm just grateful for everything. Okay, I'm going to end that. I'm going to end this here. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Have a beautiful day.